Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Kevin Wallace and welcome to the first in a series of training videos on Ethernet switch administration. In this video we want to start with the basics. How do we configure a switch port for speed, duplex, and something we'll talk about called MDIX, that's medium dependent interface. In the next video, if you join us for that, we're going to be taking a look at the creation of VLANs. A VLAN is a broadcast domain. Typically a VLAN has devices assigned to one subnet. So to get traffic from one VLAN to another VLAN, we're going to have to route that traffic. And we can take the ports on our switch and carve them up and assign them to different VLANs. And if I'm interconnecting a couple of switches as part of my infrastructure, those switches might have multiple VLANs on them. And if I just interconnect them with a single cable, by default that cable is only going to be transporting one VLAN. Wouldn't it be great if we could have that single physical connection carry traffic for multiple VLANs? Well, that's possible, and that's the job of an Ethernet trunk. And we'll take a look at the creation of an Ethernet trunk in the third video. In the fourth video, we're going to take a look at something called VTP, the VLAN Trunking Protocol. VTP can ease our administrative burden by allowing us to create VLANs or delete VLANs or update VLAN information on one switch in the infrastructure and have that information propagated automatically over trunk links to neighboring switches. And something you're going to see in the topology that we're beginning with in this video is we have more than one connection interconnecting a couple of switches. And in this default configuration, traffic is only going to be flowing over one of those links because traffic is being blocked over the other link with the spanning tree protocol. And that's a good thing. The spanning tree protocol gives us layer two loop free topologies. Bad things can happen if we have a layer 2 loop because a frame at layer 2, it doesn't have a time to live field. It can circulate endlessly throughout your switched infrastructure. You can have broadcast storms. It can cause lots of CPU cycles to be taken from the PCs on a subnet on a broadcast domain. And the spanning tree protocol protects us from that sort of thing. And we'll talk more about the configuration of the spanning tree protocol in that fifth video. And in our sixth video, we're going to take a look at how we can use both of the interconnections interconnecting our two switches. Because if I do have an inter-switch connection, do you see how that could be a bottleneck? We're coming in with a dozen different gig links, and then we're trying to leave that switch going to another switch with a single gig link. That's a pretty serious oversubscription. What we can do with either channel is logically bundle together multiple physical connections into a logical connection. But to get started, let's take a look at the topology we're going to be working with. It's pretty simple. Just want to teach you the basic concepts here. We've got two switches, switch one and switch two. They're interconnected using gig links. We're running at 1,000 megabits per second. And by the way, in case you're interested, switch one is a Cisco Catalyst 3550 switch, and switch two is a Cisco Catalyst 3750 switch. Notice the port numbering varies a little bit based on switch model. You'll see that with Cisco. You'll see that with other vendors. And the things we want to configure in this video include, well, first of all, speed. How quickly do we want to be sending data between these switches? You might wonder, why would we always not want to go with the maximum speed? Well, we might be connecting to a switch that didn't support gig links. Maybe it's an older switch. Maybe it only does fast Ethernet. We might need to manually configure the speed to a lower rate. And switch one, it has gig ports. Switch two has mainly gig ports. It's also got a couple of 10 gig ports. Well, those 10 gig ports certainly could not communicate at 10 gig over to switch one. So we want these ports to be running at 1,000 megabits per second, one gigabit per second. And also notice that there is an auto option where the switches can dynamically determine their speed. Next is duplex. Half duplex, full duplex, or we can have the switches again automatically negotiate what kind of duplex to use. Half duplex means we're only going to be sending or receiving out of a switch port at any one time. We're not going to be doing both. This was a requirement back in the days of the hub. Back when we had Ethernet hubs and we were running at carrier sense, multiple access with collision detection, it was a rule you had to run in half duplex. But now, with Ethernet switches, there's really not a need for it unless we're connecting to older equipment. As a result, we normally want to run in full duplex mode, and we can have the switches auto-negotiate this. 
and there are different schools of thought as to whether or not you should use the auto option. I think auto is a great solution for connecting out to end user devices because you're not quite sure what an end user is going to be plugging in. A lot of people say that auto should not be used between infrastructure devices. In fact, they say that auto means you auto not use it. I've got a mixed opinion on this. I have seen duplex auto negotiation fail multiple times. There are conditions when auto negotiation will not work. And I think there is a lot of value in hard coding everything between your switches. However, there's also a case to be made for leaving it at auto. As we're going to see in this demonstration, if we hard code the speeder duplex, we are going to be unable on these Cisco Catalyst switches to enable another feature, and that's the MDIX feature, the Medium Dependent Interface feature. You see, when we're interconnecting a couple of Catalyst switches, these are like devices. Ethernet uses pins 1, 2, 3, and 6 on an RJ45 connector. Two of the pins for transmit, two of the pins for receive. From the perspective of switch 1, it's going to be transmitting over its transmit pins, and if we have a straight through cable connecting over to switch 2, those same wires on which switch 1 transmitted, they're going to be coming into the transmit connectors on switch 2. We don't want that. We want the transmit on one side to map to the receive on the other side and vice versa. And for that reason, we have another type of cable we often use to interconnect switches. It's called a crossover cable. Pins 1 and 2 map to pins 3 and 6 and vice versa. However, a lot of the newer switches support this MDIX. They can dynamically determine which pins need to be acting as the receive pins and which pins need to be acting as the transmit pins. And this gives us a great luxury. And that luxury is we can use a straight through cable to interconnect our switches. Again, the caveat is on these models of Cisco Catalyst switches, you cannot do that if you have speed and duplex set to anything other than auto. Let's go out to the live interface right now and demonstrate this. We're going to do most of our configuration on switch 2. Let's begin by just taking a look at the configuration. We can look at the running configuration by doing a show running hyphen config or as a shortcut, Cisco IOS takes shortcuts, we can do a show run. And we can scroll down just a bit. And I've got cables plugged in to gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 1 and 1 slash 0 slash 2. In fact, we can confirm those interfaces are up and active right now with one of my favorite Cisco IOS commands. It's show IP interface brief. And you'll notice that those two ports that I told you about, they are up. In fact, they are up and up. Their status is up and their protocol is up. What this is telling us is we're up and happy at layer one, the physical layer. That's what the first up refers to. And under protocol, we're up there. That means we're up and happy at layer two, the data link layer. So we do have a good connection over to switch one right now. And we can see at what speed and what duplex we're currently running with another command. We can say show interface gigabit. Notice how I can use those abbreviations, 1 slash 0 slash 1, and I'll give the keyword of status. And this is going to tell me that for this port, we're up, we're connected. This port is assigned to VLAN 1, something we'll be talking about in the next video, VLAN assignment. But notice the duplex. It's full, but notice it's A hyphen full. The A says, yes, we're running in full duplex mode. We're transmitting and receiving simultaneously. The A says, this was determined automatically. It was auto-negotiated. Same thing for the speed. It's A hyphen 1000. We're running at a gigabit per second, but it was auto-negotiated. Let's say that we come from the school of thought that it's a good idea to hard code our inter-switch connections. Right now, we know we are successfully running at a gig and full duplex. Let's say that we would like to hard code that. Let me show you what issue we might run into. Let's go into both of those interfaces. There's a way to configure both interfaces at the same time. We say interface range. And I can give a range of interfaces, a range of contiguous interfaces. And it's going to be gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 1 space. The space is critical, hyphen, space, and then a 2. Now I'm in interface range configuration mode, and the commands I give, they apply to gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 1 and 1 slash 0 slash 2. And let's set the speed. Well, let's say that the speed is going to be hard-coded to 1,000 megabits per second. We're already running at 1,000 megs, so this shouldn't be a problem, it seems like. And I'll set the duplex to um, 
to full duplex. We're already running in full duplex. And um, after I gave those commands, I think we had a state change on the interface. Just look at this. It says that we are now down. Let's go back out and do another show IP interface brief and see if those interfaces are truly down. Well, they are. Look at this. We're down, down. We're down at layer one. We're down at layer two. What happened? We were already running at a gig. We were already running in full duplex. All I did was hard code that. Why do you think we're down? Well, it's something subtle that I mentioned earlier. If we are relying on MDIX to determine what's the transmit pair and what's the receive pair, we have to be running auto speed and auto duplex. And I just changed that. And I do have these switches interconnected with a straight through cable. This would work if I were using a crossover cable, but I'm not. I'm using a straight through cable. So as a result, I need to either use my crossover cable or I need to turn auto negotiation back on. Let's do that. Let's say configure terminal and let's go back into interface range configuration mode. By the way, I'm just pressing the up arrow on my keyboard to scroll through my command buffer, my command history. And I'm going to say speed is auto and duplex is auto. And after I do that, hopefully our interface is going to come back up. Let's give it a few seconds. And sure enough, look at that. Both interfaces appear to come back up. Let's confirm that with another show IP interface brief command. And once again, we are up, up. We are up at layer one. We are up at layer two. We now have a successful interconnection between our two switches. We know what our duplex is. We know what our speed is. And I've told you that we're using a straight through cable for the connection. That's the basics that I wanted to show you in this training video. Next time, we're going to start populating our switches with VLANs, so saying that one group of ports belong to one VLAN, another group of ports belong to another VLAN. This is what we might want to do in a building where we had different departments, maybe the accounting department's ports. They belong to the accounting VLAN, VLAN 100. The engineering PCs, they belong to VLAN 200. They're coming into different ports, and we can separate those groups of ports into different VLANs, different broadcast domains. And we'll see more on that in our next training video.